welcome to my voices have Tourette's and that's why I have an addiction dyslexia and ADD my name is Dan Zarin I'm your host let's get started here so today's episode is brought to you by games studio where we are recording the, the secret seller Iceland's first and only comedy club and Smaudi's volcano sauce the greatest hot sauces I've ever had in my life uh, jo- joining me today are two of my very close friends. Uh, one of them is uh, my co-host for the episode, Thod Hotler Thodotson. Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? I'm good, but <laughs> I wouldn't call myself your friend. You wouldn't call yourself my friend. I'm your roommate. Well, we've been we've been debating this for for <laughs> what like three years now yeah, as to yeah. whether we actually like each other. Yeah, no, yeah, uh, yeah. But you know, we we put up with each other, and that's yeah. what's really important. Um, but I'm glad glad I'm here. You're glad you're here. Uh, but joining us is uh, is actually um, uh, a very dear friend of ours. Uh, he's he's one of the the people I run the the secret seller with, uh, and uh, he has he is the greatest person for hiring people ever. Uh, let's welcome David Svavarsson. What what was that? <laughs> How are you, man? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> it's good to have you here. I, I, yeah, good to be here. I, I have to. I just have to start with this because I like every time I do. Any podcast that that has <laughs> your name in it, I have to talk about how you initially hired me for the for the secret seller. It's beautiful. It was the greatest hiring ever. I walk in and then, and Davi's like, "Hi," and I'm like, "I'm like, hi, uh, yeah." And I just start going like, uh, "So I've worked here, I've worked here, I've worked here." He just cuts me off and he goes, "I don't give a shit." <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, "Wait, what?" And he goes, "I don't care where you've worked. I can teach you how to pour a beer." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's it's basically what it is. It's yeah. <laughs> why 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 go through all these loops when you can just go, be straight yeah. ahead? But I I just loved it because it was it took me so off guard that <laughs> I just in my head I was like, oh, I want to work here. <laughs> I want to fucking work here. So what what are you looking for in a bartender? Just somebody who can talk to people. Yeah, yeah somebody who can yeah. talk to people and somebody yeah. who can entertain people basically yeah, yeah. over the bar because yeah. as I've always looked at the bar and oh, is it's it's. it's my stage yeah the bar is my stage and i basically my job isn't only to pour beer it's basically making you have fun and do something interesting that keeps you there yeah and then 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 comes also the thing that you giving me verbally your cv (laughs) i've got add how long do you think i can fucking keep my attention on what you have done (laughs) i I already forgotten what you said (laughs) and i love the fact that like that you like your main thing was like i just want to hire someone that can talk to people and i was like oh yeah i could do that (laughs) and then you found out later that i have social anxiety (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. it was kind of a back but what what a (laughs) face hey everyone lies on their cv let's just let's just get that out of the yeah. way as soon, as soon as you're a boss and you've, you've you've realized that and you've come to terms with everybody fucking lies <laughs> you're all good <laughs> exactly. but i i actually want to want to say uh the hardest thing that i had to do for this episode was actually come up with a title for it because my, i was thinking all right so he's he's got he, he's got addiction he's got add he's got dyslexia first thing i thought of was and that like my voice is have Tourette's and that's why i'm addicted to dyslexia no that's not a, that's not appropriate <laughs> <laughs> no or or wait, is that a coffee machine? Oh, I think I fought, I I I I hit a whiskey bottle behind it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, no alcohol is consumed in this episode, no. um, or any for that speak matter. For, speak for yourself. <laughs> speak. I'm, I'm so drunk right now. <laughs> well, well, it is a pandemic. So yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, the beauty of not having this on video. We yeah. can do what we can say whatever we want. People well, won't know. Let's not do the thing that that Axis, the radio station, did. It, back in the day it was very funny I was driving it was a Friday night we were driving downtown I was super fucked up we are driving downtown don't hold it against me <laughs> <laughs> these were the times uh, we were driving downtown and we were listening to a radio thing which was kind of like a techno thing and uh, then uh, in the middle of the episode like they're in the transformation between songs they're talking and then all of a sudden you just hear from the other side of the room just <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, oh. And then you realize, then you basically realize that everything goes silent after that because they realized that they were doing that and they forgot to turn the sliders down for the oh, microphones. Yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> live on radio. <laughs> live on radio. Yeah. And I've never heard anything about it ever again because I think, guess nobody will, was listening to that radio station ever. <laughs> or, or everybody who was listening were doing the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're, oh yeah, they're at the same page. Yeah, let's listen. <laughs> the thing about, not to, not to take a, a little bit of a, a shot against uh, Exeth because I do love the music that they play. Like, but, but I just like there was a meme that summed them up so beautifully and it wasn't even about them it was just about radio stations today in general yeah. it was just like like rock stations today it's just like 
We play rock, okay? We play fucking rock. We don't play any of that bullshit that you hear on, on the radio. We only play rock. Anyway, next up... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that sums up. ...is the Spice Girls. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And their new rock hit single. What, what the fuck? <laughs> but but so to kind of get get in into the, the actual meat and potatoes of this episode, uh, so... Uh, like one of the things that that uh, I find fascinating about you is, so you are a recovering alcoholic. Yeah. And how long have you been uh, sober for now? Uh, so just under five years. Under five years, yeah, but still, well, that's that's yeah, awesome, man! Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and and you work at a bar. <laughs> <laughs> that that is kind of the plot twist that everybody kind of notices. Yeah. <laughs> have you have you noticed a lot of alcoholics work as bartenders? Yeah. So if you even if you if you look at it into kind of like worldwide, it's very interesting that that uh, most of the kind of like the most known and the best kind of competing cocktail bartenders are actually recovering alcoholics. It's interesting because I find it. I I, I always they've, come. They've I, done the research. Yeah, I have <laughs> done, done the my research. research, and it fucked me up. <laughs> I did my research and I did my time, and yeah, deal with it. No, <laughs> it is kind of the only time you can say I did my research, and oh my goodness, it was so fun. <laughs> And it, and it basically comes down to, I've had this question asked. Basically, I, I was working at B5 at a time, which has sadly been closed. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was working there. Probably, like, people judge B5 a lot. Yeah. I never kind of partied at B5 unless I didn't have money because I worked there. Right. And uh, it is, when I was working there, it was probably one of the more fun bars I've ever worked at. Because we were all, everybody at the bar was an outcast to that place. Mm. We were all kind of like... <laughs> hipsters and daddy, daddy, we didn't fit in at all. And that was also why we were so good at telling the customer to go fuck themselves <laughs> <laughs> because we didn't belong there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, the, sometimes we were having more fun at the bar, at the shift, than the people on the other side of the bar, which were <laughs> there to party and we were there to work. Yeah. But uh, I, there was a person who walked up to me and was kind of like, ah, yeah, uh, can you make me a cocktail with Brennivin? And I just, my hat starts spinning and I'm just like, which is also kind of a part of my ADD kind of thing where I just kind of like, my hat just kind of shuffles through things. And uh, I come up with kind of like a flavor profile in my head that I want to bring to the table. And then it come, becomes, what do I put in there to get that? Right. Mm -hmm. And there there comes the thing that I've, I've already tried all the fucking liqueurs and everything. And I've, I've tried all the disgusting shit and everything. So I kind of just know how things work together. And I pour her a drink, I put a straw in it, I put a drop on my tongue, and it's exactly the flavor that I'm looking for. And it was fucking beautiful. But, yeah. Yeah. It is. <laughs> it is. And I find it, like, going a little bit further, maybe into the fact of how that whole thing kind of happened, is I was a bartender, and, and uh, I owned a nightclub in Reykjavik. It was one of the one of the bigger ones in Reykjavik. It was a really cool one. Yeah, yeah it was pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, I I think I was only there like like twice, maybe. Yeah. But it, you remember? I mean, you were you remember the first time I was there? You we were talking about that at one point because it was yeah. a staff a staff party. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Lebowski came to. <laughs> party, yeah, <laughs> but it was a yeah yeah. You uh, do you want to quickly uh, describe the bar a little bit because it had a very unique vibe to it. Yeah. So basically, the idea of it came from a one of the more famous pop culture movies in Iceland, which is called uh, Soto Reykjavik, or in English, it's called Remote Control. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because the whole movie revolves around this guy looking for a remote control. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the plot of the whole movie. The, <laughs> plot of the whole movie. Yeah. It's 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 so it's, good. Yeah. It's, I, it's I always, so meta, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> always when I when I recall it, it it it, it and the <laughs> advertisement and everything that came around it was based on that movie and how we built it. So it was basically a sh like a dive bar. When we walked in, it was in a massive debt. And we just, we were like four of us, we walk in with power tools and everything and we just changed the place in a matter of two months. And we're there every day, every night, coked out of our fucking hats. <laughs> just every, like 24 hour fucking Jeez. shifts that we're working. And uh, we completely overhaul the place. We break down walls and stuff like that. I just and want to quickly take a, a moment to assure our, our listeners, uh, he has not only cleaned himself away from alcohol. It's everything. Uh, there yeah. were there were there were a few other things that he was doing that he yeah. is now not doing anymore. <laughs> well, well, if we basically like having said that, I'm under the assumption, uh, and my opinion is that alcoholism is over the board. Like 
alcoholism has nothing to do. This is a very controversial statement that I'm about to make and a lot of people don't agree with it. Alcoholism has nothing to do with drugs or alcohol or if it may be food or whatever you're addicted to. It is kind of all ties like going to a meeting and saying, hey, my name is that and I'm an addict. In America, they call that you have to do put two bucks in the basket. Okay. Because if you introduce yourself as an alcoholic and an addict, you're introducing or try yourself twice yeah. in that sense. Yeah. And you're basically introducing yourself with the same disease twice. Yeah. Interesting. So you have to, to put two bucks in the basket. You're paying it, basically in a pot, you're paying twice. Right, right. Because the the AA and, and, and NA and all of those programs are there. They're self-sustaining. They don't take any contribution from the outside. They pay for everything from their members, which put a pot money into a basket, and which is optional. Of course. Yeah. Uh, where was I? You were talking <laughs> <laughs> the ADD. You're ta- you ta- you talking about uh, uh, your club. Oh, you yeah. went in. You did. You yeah. you had power tools. Lots of cocaine. Yeah, lots of cocaine. <laughs> but going into like the the movie base is basically it's it's about this guy that basically he the movie starts. He works at a mechanic shop, and uh, there comes basically there's a phone call for him, and he's underneath a car, and he's like, ah, oh, can you take a message? And like, no, 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 he can't take a message. And then he goes to the phone, and it's his mom on the phone, and his mom's saying basically. Where's the remote control? You have to find it. Otherwise, I'll flush the goldfish. And he's keeping goldfish in his bathtub. <laughs> so he has a shit ton of goldfish in the bathtub. And uh, the movie goes on and it's uh, everything revolves around his sister has the remote and then he finds the remote and his sister's at a party and the remote... And then there's a fire and the remote was on the couch that caught fire and this whole thing. And then he meet, meets this meets this criminal guy that basically says that he has a remote for that thing. and uh, and But he has to do stuff for him to basically get the remote. And then this whole thing happens where they're, they're, uh, they're at a place called Sodoma. Sodoma was a, basically the nightclub in the movie. Right. And then there is... Ham, Ham, which is one of the Iceland's all-time biggest bands, because of that movie, it never did anything <laughs> but that riff that goes. That's the only thing they've ever done made famous here in Iceland, and that that is what is in the movie. And in that song, there's a break in the song, so the criminal guy is on the phone. In on the dance floor and there's a payphone and he's like and the music's going super loud and he's like yeah bring the DVD players to this address what and then there's a break in the song and he screams over everything and everybody hears it and the scene basically goes into everybody whispering there's an after party there's an after party <laughs> and the movie goes on and the shenanigans goes on and at, at one point uh, the main character is about to get killed and they're they're like these rubber fucking gangsters that 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 are no about spoilers, to kill. Though. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> and and they basically go for a stupid way of killing him. And, uh, <laughs> and then uh, then at that scene, you see basically a door being kicked down, and there's just a party. And we based our nightclub on that party. Yeah. So basically, it's an apartment. So yeah. you walked in, and it was basically very, very shabby looking outside. <laughs> and you walked in through this one door, which had a powerful light shining in it. So you wouldn't couldn't see inside of a bar. You walk in, and as soon as you walk under the light, there's just a cabinet with a TV on the wall and a couch. And then there's a broken wall, and you walk through that, and there is a kitchen with appliance, <laughs> like fucking pans and yep, everything yep. stuck to the floor, everything. And then you walk a little bit further and there was a little bit of a, like a shield wall. <laughs> and behind that was a bed mm-hmm. and a cupboard <laughs> with clothes in it. And then you would walk a little bit further up and there was a stage. But on there, there was a bathtub oh, yes. <laughs> with a plexiglass sheet on top of it and, and koi fish. Right. Swimming around with lights and everything. Yeah. And then you would walk a little bit further than that. And then you were in the living room, <laughs> which had couches and stuff like that. But that was the dance floor. And the bar had all the like the liquor cabinets and everything. So that was 
Deep Ted. Crazy. I, uh, here's here's the thing. First of all, I, I wish I could have been there when they just, when they were writing the movie. Yeah. Like in the writers' room, <laughs> guys, I have got this great idea, idea for a movie. I just need about twelve different kinds of drugs, <laughs> and then I've got your movie. Yeah, yeah, and I love I love though that like I imagine I imagine them making the movie, and then you guys like. Like, I mean, I, we know how you were at the time, yeah. but I could just imagine you guys not being drugged out at all, just being completely sober and going, we don't even have to be high. Let's just do what they did in the movie <laughs> yeah. and it'll seem like we did all the drugs. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, but it was a super, I mean, it was a super unique uh, bar unique. and that, yeah. that was the thing. I think, I think that's why it was so cool was the fact that you don't see places like that. No. It doesn't even matter that it was based on a movie. I mean, that just added to the effect. Yeah. Yeah. But it was, it's, well, like you've got a, a place like Lebowski Bar, yeah. which um, well, is very obviously uh, based on Gone with the Wind. And uh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> no, it's, uh, but, but like the thing is that, well, like it's Lebowski themed. It's a Lebowski themed bar. Yeah. But yours wasn't really themed after the movie, no. it was the movie in a club. Yeah, that's really what the what yeah. the difference was, and that's what made it so unique. Yeah, basically, basically, uh, like the first commercials that we did for the the thing was basically just <laughs> the most memorable after party in Iceland's history, yep. and then it was done. That was the first thing. Like nobody knew what we were about what? to open. We didn't advertise. We didn't talk to anybody about it. We were just isolated in that place for two months building. Yeah. And then the commercials started coming out. And I remember on a uh, Sunday, no, on a yeah, Sunday night, we went to all of the most kind of biggest traffic kind of things all around the city. Traffic roundabouts and traffic roads and bridges and stuff like that. And we bought these shit ton of these like small fucking po like posters, outside posters. Yeah. And we stuck them onto the roundabouts and covered the bridges with them and everything. So everybody on the Monday that was going to work, they were seeing D10, Dupnohola T logos yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And then just, <laughs> then just on the Friday, that was the first thing that we mentioned in the radio interviews, which was the first radio interviews we did. So you guys have probably seen all the signs going up all around town of Dupnohola T. And the radio commercials going the best after party. So we're three guys. We're 25 years old. And we're opening a nightclub called Deep Dubnohola I thought you said it was four guys. Well, there were three of us that basically owned it. Right. We're, yeah, yeah. We were four to five that were building it. But yeah, that that was that was basically what it was. It was like, yeah, and we're opening up a nightclub right there. We yeah. open tomorrow. Okay. And the place was packed. <laughs> it was packed. So and but like it was like when we were doing that radio interview, there were four guys down at the bar still building, and we weren't ready. <laughs> like to basically tell you guys how. But you can get away with sorry, but you can yeah. get away with it in a club like that. Yeah, with, with with people coming in and they see people still building it, yeah. and you're just like hell of an after party, am I yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, I was. I was still putting up the sign. I was working the bar that night, but so from Wednesday. To Friday, <laughs> I slept an hour. Yeah. Uh, well, till Saturday morning, I slept an hour, to be fair. Because on the Friday, we opened, and I was still putting up a sign <laughs> when there were 30 people already there. <laughs> is, that, is that the one that we, we uh, saw when we were going through all the stuff? Like, we were going through, like, tables and chairs and such, and we found, like, a big sign? Yeah. That's the one you're talking that's about. The, yeah. The that steel, was a massive sign. It was, it was huge. <laughs> and that was basically just on the wall behind the TV. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, uh, it, it's fun. Now, to talk about, now to talk about uh, bartenders being alcoholics and referring to your, your club. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We were, we were talking about that. I, I, I got this, guys. Yeah, I got, got, got this. What a host, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so... Uh, We've been open for like six or seven months when uh, both of my co-owners of the club basically walk up to me and they say, so your, <coughs> your drinking is becoming a problem. Like, I, like uh, the bar had been like, we got a lawsuit for me throwing somebody out when I wasn't even working and that, yeah, yeah, it was like a lot, right. a lot of bullshit. Like, and, uh, and being too rough on, on people and stuff like that. And uh, 
uh, which, in my opinion, is just part of it, being rough <laughs> on people. You, 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 when you're in that position, you shouldn't be able. You're like, you, you should never take any shit. Public service announcement from David's <laughs> <Yeah>. father's son. <laughs> that, like, that's my opinion on it. It is basically the fact that uh, when some, when you're in a, in that position and you're running a bar and you, you're like stuff like that as soon as somebody starts raising their voice they're trying to tap into your fear and as soon as they get your fear they got the upper hand so you can never give that to them that's kind of my opinion on that but they basically say to me either you stop drinking or we take away your percentage in the bar right so right there and then i pick up the phone and i just i just call and i call into rehab yeah. and i go to rehab on the monday after that weekend And uh basically I'm there for a month <coughs> and there's another guy that's basically just filling in and running the bar for me. But <laughs> I go in like the delusion of what's going on in that at that time, which is so tied into alcoholism, is the fact that I go into rehab with a mindset that they only talked about alcohol. <laughs> I'm gonna quit drinking. I'm I'm not yeah. gonna stop doing cocaine because right. that's not my problem. Yeah. At that time, I'm doing six grams of cocaine a day, wow. which is enough to kill a fucking elephant. Yeah. And when they basically do a tox report on me in rehab, they are very surprised that I'm still alive. Uh, I go through the rehab, yada yada yada. But then comes the realization in the past, last week or so off rehab, I realize that I have to go back and run a fucking bar. That's my job. Yeah. My job is running a bar. So I have to fucking suck it up. I go to work and there's something about meditation. And I'm going to go out on another limb with that of saying something that not everybody agrees on. And that is, in my opinion, that prayer, I'm not a religious guy, but I pray because I look at prayer being a different form of meditation. Okay. So... Basically, when I walk into it, I'm a massive atheist. I'm still kind of an atheist, but I look at it in a kind of a different way. Mm -hmm. uh, so I walk in there, I go out, and a friend of mine is basically a relapsed alcoholic that works at the bar. And I'm. this is the first shift that I'm basically... I didn't really... I hadn't really given up. I really hadn't given up on... I'm never gonna drink again. I, that's that's big part of it. I hadn't really given up, so I'm basically standing at the bar and I want a fucking drink. Yeah, I've never wanted a drink as much in my life. And I'm standing there. I'm trying to work. I'm trying to work through it, and then I just give up. And I'm just completely and utterly. T I'm so tired. Right. And the guy walks up to me and like, "Have you prayed?" And I look at him and I'm just like, "Are you a fucking idiot?" <laughs> And he basically tells me this thing is just go lock yourself in your office, go onto your knees and fucking pray. Me and you are the only guys that know you're about to do that. And nobody will ever find out that you did. And I walk in there and I go on my knees and I just pray. And as I said, I look at that more as a, a basically form of meditation today. So basically I walk out of that office And I haven't really craved a drink since. Wow. Which is weird. Yeah. And that that is what basically changed my whole mindset. Yeah. Because at that time, I gay, completely gave up to alcohol. Not I didn't give it up. I completely gave up to the what what like in quotes, the demon that is alcohol. Yeah. And Since then, yes, I've won it. Like, there's been times where I, ah, now would be a nice time to have a glass of whiskey. Right. Or something like that. And you, you've been a witness to that. Like, it, it, it is, it comes and it's always there. The longing is kind of always there, but there's never the need for alcohol. Right. Because going back to the alcoholic kind of structure of it and why I say that drugs and alcohol have nothing to do with it is because... <clears throat> the programs and everything that revolve around it kind of work around the fact of looking at myself and accepting myself because my problem has never been drugs and alcohol. My problem has always been being sober. I've never been able to be sober because in reality, my life in my head is so gray 
and so fucking bad when I'm sober because I hate myself so much. And it, it kind of comes down to acceptance. As soon as I accept myself for who I am, I don't need to drink. Yeah. And what I need to do to do that is forgive myself, forgive other people, ask other people for forgiveness, yada, yada, yada. So I can accept who I am, basically becoming a better person that I can accept. Yeah. That's kind of what it is. And yeah. You don't don't have the need to escape yourself. No. Yeah. Well, there's there's two because things. It basically is, yeah. Yeah. No, there's two things I I want to I want to actually uh touch on with what you said. Uh first of all, uh and and I have to do this the way that I re- the way I remembered yeah. what we were talking about cuz <laughs> that's the problem with having ADD mm. is is like like literally as you're talking I have to constantly be saying over and over again the point that I want to get to <laughs> or, or what you, what I'm getting you back yeah. to yeah. just so I can remember it so if if you want to talk about fucking multitasking uh, <laughs> but, but no uh I wanted to talk uh yeah you mentioned need the word need and there is a very, very big difference between need and want. Yeah. Um, and this is also big with it's it, like every addiction is the trick. Like one of the things, the hardest thing to realize is how much you don't need something. You want it. Yeah. But you don't need it. It's like with with smoking. Like I've noticed like uh, like I the, lo- the longest I went without smoking cigarettes whoa, was six months. And what I real and what I've realized since then is that like when I'm at when I'm at work, like I'll. I'll constantly crave a cigarette mm-hmm. because it's just like when I'm constantly in a stressful environment, you, you constantly crave one, yeah. but it's, it's not the cigarette you want. It's the break that you want. Yeah. You don't of, want yeah. the cigarette. You want the break. Yeah. The break just like the cigarette just happens to be there. I remember once I was working at Lebowski bar and I, I went, I went out for a smoke, but I didn't, I didn't have a cigarette. I just want, I just went out and I had a break. I took my phone out and I just went on my phone for like five minutes. Yeah. I even timed myself five minutes. Exactly. <laughs> Then I went back in and realized I didn't actually need the cigarette. That yeah. wasn't, and that's, and that's what people don't realize is like when, like even, you know, nicotine, yes, it's addicting, but you don't really need the, the, you don't really need the, the, uh, activity. You need the, you need something different. Yeah. Putting that into perspective, alcohol is kind of the same thing. Having a cigarette at work, you're getting a break from your job. Right. Having a drink, I'm taking a break from my brain. Yeah. yeah, that's bit, my alcoholic <laughs> exactly. brain that just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop, and, and it's that, the and it's the the like the activity of doing it because yeah. it's like it's like what I've always said of of the the reason why it's uh, it's so hard for me to quit smoking is not actually that I don't want to. Yeah, it, because I've I've had like I've had so many times where I'm I'm like you know what I just don't feel like smoking right now, and then but then I think about the fact that like like when you're in the entertain the entertainment business, mm. the reason why it's so hard for entertainers. To, to quit smoking is that's how they meet people. Yeah. Like I've had, I've had, I've, I've met people that are huge in the entertainment industry. When I lived in LA, I met, I met people that, that like, honestly, I could have gotten amazing opportunities mm-hmm. from them just because they asked me for a cigarette. I yeah. mean, it's, it's amazing uh, that, that, that's what makes these things so tough. But when you realize that you don't need them, yeah, because realistically, even in that situation, y- you could just hang out around the smokers. You don't actually have to have, like yeah. smoke cigarettes. You could even just have a pack. What are they going to do? Be like, hey, you're not getting cancer with us. We don't like you. <laughs> well, no, just hang out. Have like yeah, the, have, the have sec- secondhand else. smoking. <laughs> I've, I've noticed this. It kind of just clicked right now when you said it. And it has, I, I noticed that pattern kind of like with the secret seller. That there are some people that say they don't really fit in. They don't really fit in because there's a very closed off bubble at the secret seller, which isn't really true. What's going on is you're not a smoker. Yeah, you're <laughs> not smokers fitting in because, the non-smokers. because all the comedians that regularly perform at the Secret Cellar, they all smoke and they all sit in the green room, which happens to be the smoking area <laughs> yeah. at the Secret Cellar. To be fair, which, to, which to, I'm, I'm, I'm rarely there because I don't smoke. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair though, I mean, I mean, if, if you're an Icelander who doesn't smoke, like Thodaler, you are in the, the small percentage. I mean, oh, yeah, smoking yeah. is actually insanely common in Iceland. Yeah, it really is. I'm, I'm one of the few that don't smoke. I tried. I, I really tried. <laughs> I tried my best, but I just couldn't do it. Yeah, I'm quitting right now. So. Yeah. Thodaler, I... I'm so disappointed that you <laughs> don't like smoking cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I remember, like, my mom, she, she said, I was like, I'm so proud of you for not smoking. I was like, oh, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I really tried, you know. But, uh, you, Do know. you know how hard it was for you to get in, mom? <laughs> but, like, before, like, when, when you were allowed to smoke inside 
bars and everything. I was, uh, uh, you know, you, you were constantly with people the whole night. Mm. Now, because everybody has to go outside and smoke, <laughs> I'm always the guy that <laughs> has alone. to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's like, can, the can, can you guard the, uh, the table and all our clothes? I was like, yeah. And I'm like, and that's that's my life. I'm guarding other people, the, the smokers. <laughs> Items. I remember, I remember. I remember. I met you. I, met, I met someone. Tables. I met someone <laughs> once who was a bro, recovering alcoholic, and, and they they quit smoking as well. And they said that was the worst part of that decision yeah. was just that they always had to watch everyone's stuff yeah, while they went yeah. out for a cigarette. Yeah. And they, they, but the thing that was actually fascinating about what they, uh, well, when I was talking to them about this, is they were making a point of they were like, do you do you realize how much like how often people smoke when they drink? No, I was like, well, yeah, you know, you, you smoke maybe once, like an hour, once every two hours. And they're like, no, <laughs> yeah. it's like once every drink. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. like, and it's like, and like she was pointing out, she was like, the thing is that, that, whoa, what, and why she was so happy that she quit was she noticed that when, when people would drink and would go drinking and they're smokers, they would have a drink and that drink would be like maybe 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. They'd go through it and then they'd go for a cigarette before they get their next drink yeah. and then they'd have that next drink and it would be about 10 15 so they'd be smoking every 10 to 15 minutes yeah. and that's why people go through entire packs of cigarettes while they're drinking yeah. and they don't even realize that they're going through all the cigarettes they're like oh i must have given out all my cigarettes and then no. they're just like why are my lungs hurting so much <laughs> yeah. one, one of the one of the like more beautiful weekly bars in reykjavik is ölstorn yeah, because it has a fantastic smoking area. <laughs> so basically, a lot of the times, if you go there on a Monday, the bar is empty. The bar is completely empty. <laughs> yeah. But there are thirty people sitting outside in the smoking area, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're sitting there and they're ordering drinks. And holy shit, people smoke! Oh, yeah. have you have you noticed? Oh, that's I mean that actually is a factor too to where people go. It really is. I mean, I've I've got because we we uh, David, you and I talked about this at one point about like we we're talking about the factors of bars yeah. and like what people like about them and and like in in Reykjavik you basically have you you've got like your Irish yeah. Irish bars um you've like Irish and English uh, pubs yeah. you've got those then you've got your your novelty bars like like Lebowski and and you know D10 when that was open yeah. and then you have and then you have the bars with the best smoking areas. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like it's literally, I mean, it is a factor. I mean, because if you go, for example, like Boston, yeah. when that was open, that literally, ha it wasn't even just that it was the best smoking area in town. It was one of the nicest just hangout areas yeah. downtown. And it was because of the fact that you could just hang out. It was, it was outside. You could hang out. You could just sit there, have your drink, have a smoke or not have a smoke. It's still nice to just hang out there. Yeah. But the fact that it was such a cool smoking area was the biggest part about it. Yeah, it kind of was. Yeah. And the fact that Bjork usually came there, well, in there once in a while and, and uh, was dancing on tables and stuff like that. <clears throat> there is that too. cigarettes from people. She didn't do that. I, I don't know. I, I no, wasn't there. I wasn't uh, there. The other point, though, that I wanted to talk about that you mentioned earlier, uh, and this is a topic that we've talked a lot about, uh, just just in general. But I, you you made the mention about how like, and the, this is a big thing with with AA. Yeah. With AA, it's uh, like submitting to a higher power or yeah. accepting a higher power, um, and you described it as it's not necessarily a god or a religious higher power. No. It's just it's just accepting something higher than yourself. Yeah. And I think that's what, what I find so fascinating about that is like when you were talking about praying, when you talk about prayer, it no, well, like when, when people listen to the, this and they, they hear that you're an atheist, but you prayed, it's like, you're not necessarily praying to a God. You're it's almost, you could be praying to yourself, yeah. like to stop yourself. It's, and that's, that's what I find fascinating about this. Yeah. How I, how I view religion is I, I, I believe, but I don't practice religion. Right. This is, this is like what it is in my head. And, to explain it a little bit, it basically is you're a bit ignorant mm. if you basically believe that you're the highest power in the universe, that everything revolves around you. And in my body and in my brain, if I am the highest power in my reality, then my I'm, I'm always trying to kill myself. Basically, my me drinking and doing drugs is my self-destructive path. Yeah. And... I chose a fucking slow ass way to kill myself. And that is just by drinking myself away. Uh, that is my reality. If I am the, the higher power and what I say with when, what I mean with, when I say 
uh, it's a bit ignorant to think that there is no high, there is no higher power in the universe. What is an atom? What is a black hole? Yeah. What is all these things that are greater powers than any of us in this room? If a black hole appears outside, it swallows everything, and we're fucked. That is a massively higher power. You jumping in front of a moving car means the car is your higher power because the car will take you out in a fucking second. (coughs) Unless it's a Prius. Unless it's a (laughs) well. Unless it's a Prius. Well, and then it'll just counterpoint bump into you. Priuses are very fucking heavy. (laughs) (laughs) Prius Priuses, the Canadian cars. They bump into you and go, Oh, sorry about that. Sorry. I know I know nothing about cars. So I was like, I hope I'm <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, your your you, fine you, as long as a Prius doesn't run you over, because yeah. then you're fucked. <laughs> and you're actually thinking smart cars, not Priuses. Smart yeah, cars I mean, are the ones that they bump into you, and it's just a minor inconvenience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's kind of like like walking into a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Even the dog can hurt you more than the pre- than the the smart car. <laughs> Prius is just a funny word. Prius. <laughs> A priest. Oh, priest, but it's such it's so, so it's such a fascinating topic though, and and like that's why what I what I what made the difference like when you were talking when we were talking about it a while ago uh this topic was the fact that you were you were talking about the fact that like for ev- for, for everyone that higher power is different with like yeah. like no matter what they believe and for everyone that higher power is different and it's and it's just a matter of of accepting it's it's kind of like accepting like when you say accepting that there's a higher power it's just accepting that you're not the you're not the the highest on the food chain. Yeah. So there is something you can do about it. You have still you, have yeah. time to grow. You still yeah. have time to improve yourself. Because if you're if you're just all like if you're the highest power, then, then we're what doomed. do you have to work on? Yeah. Then we're all doomed. Then we're all yeah, fucked. Then we're all fucked. <laughs> yeah. If Dalvi is the highest power, power we're, all <laughs> we're all fucked. Oh. But then then also comes like into that, like I've I've kind of looked at it. When I look at it in that kind of way, it's not religious, it's not stuff like that. You also open up the like the ADD kind of aspect of thinking into it where have you ever seen or listened to two religious people that believe in separate things yeah. arguing <laughs> it's kind of like children fighting at a fucking kindergarten it's it kind of like my god is the real god no my god is the real god wait what <laughs> <laughs> my dad's is stronger than your dad yeah, yeah. Well, I guess you're on pulp. No, no, he isn't. <laughs> not to not to go not to go too far into the the religious topic because I mean this is still my voice is F Tourette's. Not my religion has Tourette's. Um, but but no, I've no I, like I do love the fact that when people say, "Oh my God," yeah, are aren't they kind of admitting that there are other gods? Oh yeah, oh my because god. they're saying, "Oh my God," they're yeah. talking about their own god. What does Allah mean? God. Yeah. yeah, it's just a diff- different translation of the same fucking word. Yeah. Yeah. But then you basically say, oh, this guy is, yeah, he's talking about a God. It, he just believes in something Oh, your different. God. Yeah. Oh, your God. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I want to yeah. st- start that trend. Oh, your God. Yeah. Just, yeah. Oh, your God. Yeah. I would actually think that you, oh, pull, YG. you pulling that off, you would have to basically be drag Jesus again. I have, oh, my oh. God. That, that, no, the, one of the greatest experiences of my life was being dressed as drag Jesus. Actually, I, was, I wasn't even dressed as drag Jesus. I was just, I think it was, no, I was dressed as drag Jesus. I was. <laughs> I was dressed up as drag Jesus. I walked up to a table I was serving and, and I was like, I was like, can I get you guys anything? And they're like, no, 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 no. And then I start walking away and I hear like, it was a family, yeah. this little boy. He just goes, dad, was that Jesus? And his dad just goes, no, son, that was blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> it's just beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I I think that topic is always so interesting in the fact that yeah, my religion is better than your religion. <laughs> no. And how is it? How huh? how has it? I mean, how has it now? Now you've been sober for almost five years yeah. from from everything. And how, I mean, how has that experience been for you? Like you know, like <laughs> like if you were if you were to go through, like how long did it take you before you were actually okay with being sober? It took me about maybe six months. Six months. Six yeah. months was was around the time when I, like, <laughs> another thing that is always kind of misconstrued and stuff like that. It's called the spiritual awakening, but it really isn't. It's just a realization. Yeah. yeah. It's just a realization that, that when you actually realize, oh, shit, I'm a completely different human being right now. My mind works in completely different ways. I don't need to drink. I feel good. 
And I feel very good about f- realizing that there is actually something beyond the drink. There oh. is something beyond everything. Even at the at the worst times, like like I've I've talked about this uh, sometimes when it like how deep the the uh, what's it called? I, I'm not finding the name for it. It's the the delusion of alcoholism basically becomes because I never believed that I have a problem with alcohol or drugs. Right. And the delusion goes that deep that it's a, it's actually a very funny story because um, I was at home. My brother had been recovering for about six years at the time. I live with him at Kratoviskada. Basically, just up the street was Lebowski Bar. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't had a drink all day. And my brother was just like, oh, you just fucking leave. Go and have a drink. I was working in fishing at seven o'clock in the morning the day after. And uh, I basically, I go to the bar and I'm going to have one drink. It's just going to be one drink, then I'm going home to bed. I finish that one drink and I'm sitting and I'm talking to the bartender, uh, Ayo. Yeah. Just for reference, for those who know <laughs> Great who guy. he is. Great guy. Uh, uh, we're sitting and we're chatting. There are people at the bar. We're all chatting. And then I order my second beer. I drink like the top of the beer and then I go out for a cigarette. And I bring the beer with me and da yada yada And I'm smoking a cigarette and I get into an argument with an American guy. I believe... It was about religion. <laughs> I mean, back to that point. It's just all circling yeah, back. It's all, no. It comes in circle. But we get into this argument, and at one point, I throw my cigarette in his face, and I punch him. I knock him out in one punch. He falls to the ground. At the same time, a police car is driving past us. They exist in Iceland? Yeah. <laughs> it was a, It was like kind of like seeing an elf. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, they arrest me and they throw me into a cell. Six o'clock in the morning, they release me from that cell because I have to go to work for six months before I go <laughs> because to Because of rehab. that, they were like, <laughs> yeah. Could you they, imagine they that? Believed you. You're like, I have to go to work. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't want <laughs> yeah, to put yeah. you in jail. They needed dis- <laughs> to, you know, <laughs> inconvenience you. I sorry. have to be there at seven o'clock. So they let me go. Uh, I basically That's go so home. I change. <laughs> yeah, it's very Icelandic. <laughs> <laughs> like you're in a jail cell like I have to go to work oh I'm sorry I didn't know you had work <laughs> yeah but, but you murdered someone this is Iceland you didn't murder yeah, someone yeah. go to work we can pick you up after work <laughs> you know, when is your shift over okay we'll, we'll pick you up we'll then. be there see you then <laughs> but uh, but uh, I go to work for six months after that I actually believed that I wasn't an alcoholic because that one time I drank one beer and nothing more. Yeah. yeah. And it had nothing in my brain. It had nothing to do with the fact that I was arrested <laughs> and I was locked away from alcohol for the full night. <laughs> yeah. But you've also, you've also I just m- had one drink. Yeah. You were arrested. That, no, 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 no. You're, 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 you're just spinning this around. <laughs> but you've, I mean, you have not, uh, well, uh, and actually, I, I do want to do well, like with this next statement. I do want to do a quick uh, trigger warning to people listening um, because it's a very dark uh, uh, topic. But uh, I mean, you've you've commented to me before about the fact that like one of the things about about, about when you get that far into alcoholism is when you when you're when you're fighting people. Yeah, it's like you're trying to find the one that ends your life. Yeah, you're trying to find that last fight so that mm-hmm. it, it just puts an end to everything. Yeah, for the last maybe three or four years of my my drinking days i because of like i couldn't <coughs> i i worded in that way that i was too much of a pussy to kill myself mm-hmm. so i always had to find an alternate route of killing myself and in my head it was basically picking a fight with the biggest guy that i could find and hoping that that guy was good enough of a fighter that he could kill me yeah but it's it's shrouded in my brain that I'm actually trying to kill myself. So basically what's happening is I'm going into a fight subconsciously with nothing to lose. I'm ready to die in that fight. Yeah. Which makes you a very fucking dangerous human being. Oh having yeah. Having nothing to lose. And it, it ties into a lot of like, I've, 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 I've talked about this at the bar to people. Like if you look at heroes, like war heroes, Vikings, the Vikings were very much like that. 
They believed that if they died in battle, they would go to Vanhala to the eternal party with the gods. Right. That basically means that they smiled upon death, which basically means it doesn't matter if I've been speared through the fucking stomach, I'm dying heroically. Right. So I'm getting a higher stool in Vanhala. So they smiled and killed six to seven more people and then they died. Yeah. That's kind of what it is. It's the same thing as with, with, with like in the, if you look at the US Army, people that are heroic there, that are people that have nothing to lose and they're okay with dying. So they put themselves in a situation where they pick, become heroic. Yeah. And my thing, it was just, I picked a fight with a huge guy. He attacked me and I beat the living shit out of him because for somebody that has nothing to lose, you would, you're always willing to go 10 steps further than that person. Yeah. yeah, which is which is disgusting, and and also with how cocaine basically what what it does to your brain is, it takes away all of like over time cocaine takes away everything civil about you, so it becomes a normal thing to beat somebody over the head with a baseball bat. Right, and that's just a normal thing. That's nothing that it's cringy. It used to be cringy for me to see somebody's just forehead just split open, but over time, that just becomes normal. The same yeah. thing as a bullet wound in war becomes normal. It is war. Lighting somebody's apartment on fire like is happening now in Reykjavik. Yeah. That's yeah. just a that's normal the, thing because right it, it just basically builds on to itself. And when it comes to throwing somebody out of a nightclub <coughs> or something, strangling that person till he passes out becomes normal. Yeah. A police officer using force, it becomes normal. Because you're working in a fucked up job. It becomes normal to be paranoid or scared or shit like that. It's something that people don't really want to talk about right now. But shooting somebody because of paranoia is just... It becomes the norm of, the, of your life. Right. Which is kind of weird. And in my uh, thing, it was a self-destructive path of all that. But I was, as I say, I was too much of a pussy to actually take matters into my own hand. Yeah. Thankfully, I'm still here. Yeah. But worst thing about it was I became a very good fighter. Yeah. And I'm very good at that. <laughs> well, for, first of all, we're glad you're still here. Just yeah. so you know. Yeah, yeah, oh, thanks, thanks. Not just because this is a really good episode. but <laughs> 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 I, I mean, we hey, we got to get some great guests. And if you're not here, we can't get great guests. Yeah, I'm yeah. just like, hey, come on. Well, yeah, I also you, you invited yeah. the highest power in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. There it is. You can add delusional. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to the... uh, although I wanted to like point out something because this is my voices after Tourette's. Yeah. And having something to say, like, because we've talked about this. And I noticed this when we opened the cellar and something we've talked about. And it 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 has to do with uh, the thing that I said before about it becomes accepting who you are. Yeah. Accepting who you are is a very big thing about it. And it has to do with depression. It has to do with so many things. And this is something that I noticed with you, Dan, and is noticed with when you started using your Tourette material, when you started talking about Tourette's on stage and you started basically doing that, slowly and slowly, you changed into a different person. And we remember that when ticks started, you started lessening the ticks and your depression episodes and stuff like that started becoming less frequent and frequent. And that was you talking about your Tourette's and accepting who you are. Yeah. And I noticed this with a lot of people. Like I've been, I've been watching <coughs> streamers and stuff like that. And it's something that not everybody kind of realizes. And it's it's that. It's it's kind of the same thing as with 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 almost everything. As soon as you accept who you are, depression or whatever it is, it becomes better. Yeah. It becomes oh. better because you can't really live a life where you're in a state of always hating yourself or always thinking you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. If you're good enough for you, nothing else fucking matters. Yeah. So accept yourself. That is kind of, in, in my opinion, what I take away from almost any everything of this is... That is the main problem with a lot of people and with what, what's been talked about with social media and stuff like that. It always comes around the fact that you feel lesser. Yeah. And feeling lesser becomes, because I feel that, I don't accept who I am. 
I need to be somebody else. As soon as I can be myself and I can accept that, then there's more of an inner peace that comes with it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, now to talk about, about a, a different topic. Well, also I have to say, I love the fact that you, you were like, you were trying to like, you were pointing at Thoat Hotler and you're just like, and I mean, when it comes to, well, really everyone, <laughs> <laughs> It was like, it was like, I want to reference Thought Alert, but do I really? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, he's not worth it. No. <laughs> um, I mean, not, because I talk about my uh, anxiety on stage. So yeah. that's, you know, we all talk about what we have yeah. and, and, and it helps. Yeah. Your but confidence, like, I mean, in, immensely grew when you, when yeah, you went I, open. Like really, when I really went into talking about the anxiety and everything, it, I mean, it, it, it changed a lot. I'd never actually seen you go off the cup like you usually do now. Mm. Like sometimes when you you used to always just stick to your material. Yeah, yeah. But now when it's basically become around more of anxiety, mm -hmm. you seem to go a lot more. You have the confidence to go off the cuff yeah, yeah, and basically right. spin off the crowd and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And in that sense, it, 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 it has made you an infinitely better comedian yeah, than you actually yeah. were yeah, yeah, yeah. when you actually started accepting yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, I mean, that's the same thing as with yeah. when he started accepting the Tourette's and basically showcasing it and basically accepting this is what I do, this is what happens. This all of a sudden, a lot of shit just fucking opened up. Well, the Tourette's is my higher power. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it controls you. <laughs> it controls me. Um, uh, now, now to get to get to uh, the other stuff, uh, because we've. I mean, this has been a fascinating topic of uh, or talk about uh, alcoholism. Uh, but you do have dyslexia as yeah. well. Well, uh, which which I find, I mean, I find it, it really fascinating because I mean, we've talked in this uh, this podcast before about stereotypes, and mm -hmm. no, I mean, everyone everyone has their stereotypes about dyslexia. They talk about how how it's just like, oh, a dyslexic man walks into a bra, you know, like yeah, things yeah. like that. <laughs> but what I found fascinating is I was talking to you about it one day. Uh, the topic really came up because I was talking about the Hunger Games, and uh, I was talking, <laughs> I was talking, I was. I, I was talking about how I was I was messing with Alex one one night because she was like she was like Dan have you ever have you ever uh, read the Hunger Games books and I was just like no I mean all right she was like because they're so much better than the movies and I'm like well to be fair if 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 I don't like the movies I'm not gonna read the books and she's just like getting into an argument and she's like that's why you should read the books and I'm like spoiler alert never done either uh, and she, <laughs> but then I tell Davi about this and I have since now uh, I've seen them uh, but uh, I, I saw the movie still haven't read the books but I, I talked to Davi about this and he goes no you have to read the books I, I've read them they're amazing and I'm like you're dyslexic and you've read them <laughs> well audio <-based. laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> but you were you were talking when we were talking about this topic you made a comment that it's it's not just the fact that that like the order of the letters get uh, gets messed up in your brain, it's also that it becomes very tiring to yeah. read. Yeah. So to explain, like, because everybody has a different form of dyslexia, it yeah. kind of shows itself in a different way. I can read, but I still kind of can't read. Mm -hmm. So what, ha like, I, I can sit down and read something, but over reading half a page, I'm just tired. Yeah. I'm just completely tired. And the more tired I get, the harder it becomes for me to read. Uh, it, it is in my in my case it kind of I see the letters kind of moving around the page so I'm always following the sentence okay and then it basically becomes also when I start getting tired I stop kind of reading and I start my brain starts guessing so I read the first three letters of the word and then I guess the rest it's a lot of the times it's kind of like that so I think I know what's coming up next. And I basically just, it's, I basically become a human autocorrect. Yeah. Right. In a sense. <laughs> <laughs> I basically write but a the bad first one. three, but yeah, a bad one. First three wait, words. Wait, so what you're saying is that if I said, if, well, like if I send a really fucked up text and like, like there's, there's letters that are just out of place. They're like, cause of autocorrect. Yeah. I show it to you and you just read it to me. Yeah. I might be able All to right. just read it to you. Yeah, that, that, and it, it becomes very tiring. And it, 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 like, school has never been anything that I work in or right. anything like that. It's just the atmosphere or stuff like that that I just, it doesn't work for me. And for a lot of people, it just doesn't work. Well, if we go a little bit further into that, school system as it works today, it doesn't really work. Yeah. It works for even, like, 
some people that are looking for maybe becoming a lawyer or something like that. But as soon as you basically go into something that is a bit like if you're if you're I I have to want to study something to actually study. It. Right. Yeah. I my head has to be very invested in wanting to learn this shit so I can study it. Well, then, this is kind of the like it's like the the, the double edged sword of ADD. Yeah. yeah. Because ADD, it can be that you're like so, so into something that you can't focus on anything else, yeah. or, or that you start focusing on something and then and then you can't continue. Yeah. So, so ADD and I, is I, uh, different, but then you actually tie into ADHD. Right. Which is kind of the same thing, but ADD is just attention deficit disorder. ADHD is attention deficit hyperactive disorder. Right. So basically you add on to it the thing that as soon as I get tired of something, I, I my body craves to move. Yeah. And it's just it's just over the years, it's it's something that a lot of people talk about but don't agree on is ADD is ADHD is hyperactive disorder with attention deficit disorder. Yeah. But then when I get older, it becomes ADD because I just struggle with attention, but I've learned where to put my hyperactive disorder. Yeah. A lot of the times I get annoying because I don't even notice it when my leg starts moving. Right. And my leg starts moving and that's just my brain getting rid of excess energy. Yeah. Like, yeah. and, and, but being that when you're younger and when you're in school and when you have all that energy that you have, have to get out because otherwise you like you get this claustrophobic super claustrophobic thing when you're just tied down into a fucking room and you're supposed to be reading and you have this claustrophobic thing because you you can't really be there and you you have to go out climb a fucking thing or or jump <laughs> off a thing or run or stuff like that yeah. but a teacher is telling you no you have to sit down and you have to read this and you're sitting there Stay still. and Behave. your ADD becomes massive because you can't stop moving and you can't keep attention on this because the only thing that your brain wants to do is go out and run a circles around the fucking house. Yeah. It becomes, that becomes a double-edged sword where the education system just basically takes people like me and many others and just fucking stabs you with it, breaks it off and stabs you with the other half. Right, and it's because they don't understand it. They don't don't really understand. Because I, I was going to say, like with with me, and I've talked about this in the podcast that with with my form of ADD, well, like I I have I have a difficult time processing the order of thoughts. Yeah. So like I can process everything that I want to say, but but it's like <laughs> like twenty minutes later, I'll be like, you know what I forgot to say about alcoholism is <laughs> yeah, and it's, it actually there is something I forgot to say about alcoholism <laughs> 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 that I just remember now is and it actually is kind of. Uh, Maybe we'll get to it, uh, but but no, because I was gonna say like with with and with that, that's why like when you, when you talk about how you have a tough time reading because eventually it's just it it becomes tiresome. Mm -hmm. It like with me, what happens is I get I get to the point where I'll start reading something, and if it's too long, like within like a few, uh, like not even a few paragraphs, mm -hmm. just like two paragraphs, my brain will start will start like it's not like it's. It's not like I'm getting bored. It's just it starts losing the ability to keep going. Yeah. It loses the energy. And it just like I need to do something else to get to get that energy back up to read the rest of it. Yeah. So like if someone sends me like a page and they're just like, hey, can you read this? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever walked like walking from the apartment to the bar and you're walking, you're thinking about something and then you're there and you don't remember walking there yeah it's just becomes a black space where you basically you you were basically just on autopilot yeah. i've had that reading where i sit down and i'm reading and it's going very well and then my brain goes somewhere else yeah and then i'm done with a page and i'm reading for somebody and i've read that to that person but i don't remember what i read because the, fo the focus uh, diminishes yeah. like the you start losing that focus yeah. on on what you're actually doing yeah and i'm still reading out loud I'm still reading out loud and you understand every single word. And if you're reading with me, I'm reading the book that we're talking we're yeah. talking about. But then basically when I'm done reading, I don't remember a word yeah. that I just said. They would say because like, my brain has been yeah. somewhere completely different. Yeah. Do you have any do you have any tricks with the with the dyslexia? Do you, do you have anything that you do 
to make it easier or make it slightly like better so, to work with? So in my thing, I just don't read. Yeah. It's just no. something that I, that I, if, if there's something that I have to read, I'm forced to read it and I read it. I'd rather Unless have somebody, it's an audio book. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd rather have somebody like you've witnessed. I basically, there's something important and I'm just like, fuck. And I pass it over. But I also have to have the time to read it. So if I'm at work and there's a, somebody that posts something on Facebook that I have to read, that's going to take me 40 minutes yeah, to I get through. I get a lot of phone calls from him after I send him a message that's too long. Yeah. I get a phone call. Dan, just tell me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm not going to read this. So, so, <laughs> sometimes I can just see these three thoughts just hovering, yeah. just hovering, just hovering. And it's been like 10 minutes and I'm just like, I'll just call it. I just send you a message. Just call me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to be able to read through that. <laughs> do you have, and do you like, do you have a, cause I, what I've noticed though about this stuff and like the reason why I wanted to do this podcast and really like get to the stuff that we can't necessarily talk about on mm -hmm. stage, but like, and talking to people about these things is there's so much, it's not even just that there's stereotypes. It's also that people just simply don't understand what's going on. Yeah. yeah. And I love, like, cause I've no, I noticed one thing that I get, I, I tend to get uh, like a lot of people hate me for saying it. And then they understand when I, when I explain it is I can't watch movies with subtitles. And, I, and I get a lot, I get a lot of hatred for it. Like when I say, like when people are oh, like, why do, why do you watch movies dubbed? Like, why do you prefer to watch them dubbed? And I'm like, because I can't watch them with subtitles. And they're like, just, just give it a little bit of effort. And I'm like, no, you don't understand because of, of my ADD. I can't like my brain either watches the movie or the, or subtitles. the subtitles. Yeah. I can't watch both. Same here. And I can't focus on either of them. If, if both are happening at the same time, yeah, I've kind of learned to basic. Yeah. That that's the thing. I I can focus on the movie, but I can't focus on the subtitles and the movie. Right. Sometimes it even in the when I was younger, it used to be I couldn't focus on either if there were subtitles, yeah. because I would switch between, and then comes a subtitle that's too fast or something like that, and I've lost the complete plot of the fucking movie. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's probably. A little bit different for like us here in Iceland because we grow up uh, like everything is. I mean, a lot of things are subtitled, so it kind of you know you grow up with that. So it's probably double hard for you, like with the ADD, and you don't grow up with seeing a lot of subtitles when you're watching a no, movie. No, or... what drives me crazy because I've noticed that Icelanders just watch everything with subtitles. I, I've even noticed like Icelanders will set movies on Netflix. To, to have subtitles on at all times yeah. and, and they'll be in English with, with English subtitles yeah. and, uh, and the volume will be up. But what drives me crazy is that I, I will sit there and watch Icelanders watch movies with the subtitles like changing position on the fucking screen yeah. and yeah. it doesn't drive them crazy <laughs> but it drives me crazy because yeah. it'll be on the bottom and I'll be like oh okay it's there and why is it on the top <laughs> why is it in the top right and why are you not changing this awesome. should I should yeah. I explain this to you right now <laughs> it's because there's another text on the screen <laughs> why you don't need more ask text the, on the screen ask the fucking director <laughs> And like, like I'll, I'll be watching this this movie, and and like the Icelander I'm watching it with, they'll they'll just be watching the movie, and I'll be like, "Am is it just me losing my mind, or are you doing this too?" And they're like, "What's wrong?" Yeah. The fucking director decided <laughs> to have a Spanish speaking bloke in the fucking movie, and then all of a sudden becomes hola, and there's a sub in the movie. There's subtitles. Like, hello. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't put hello over hello. We understand. Yeah, so what, we understand hello. Come yeah. on. We don't. We don't need to be hello. It's See, hello. Well, hello. well, they still do. Yeah, yeah. I know. I know. See, and this is the problem. Like I. So what happens is I can't. Like so I. I can't watch movies unless they're dubbed. But the problem is, like, the dubs are already so bad. Imagine if there's multiple languages at the same time. So it's, so it's just like, hello, hola. Uh, <laughs> no, like, for me, like, when I watch a movie and there's no subtitles, I, it, it feels kind of naked for me. Like, oh, there's supposed to be something going on in the bottom. Doesn't turn you on. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow! Where did that come from? <laughs> it's it's naked. That when was, he was doing this with his hands. <laughs> I was yeah. I, I was going to explain uh, that. Yeah. Like I think both of us were just like that. May have been the most ADD moment. <laughs> 
of this entire yeah, session. But, but I get it now because I was I was uh, yeah, it's doing like, the yeah, things yeah, with my fingers yeah. and 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 say, say naked. But yeah, it feels uh, <laughs> the bottom <laughs> bottom feels naked. It bothers me so much right now. <laughs> This is like the episode we were talking about how often you say the word like, and then you were just, it's like, it's like, wow, I really say like, a, like a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <sighs> so you were saying? Uh, naked. <laughs> I'm naked? No, it, it feels naked to me. Uh, if, if there's no subtitles. <laughs> Yeah, right now, right now I've, I'm at the point where I can just fucking ignore them. Yeah, I'm, but, I'm not even reading the subtitles, but... It, it needs to be something, some action there. Yeah, but it is. It is weird though, and I wonder if you're the same way. Well, like, when, <laughs> you always gotta have the action. Man. No, but like when when they have parts that that have to be subtitled. Have you yeah. have you noticed? Like, it's like you'll you'll forget all the subtitles for the whole thing, and then there's this one part where they switch languages, and you have to read the subtitles, and then the movie is just gone. I don't because you have to see the yeah, subtitles. That that's what I hate sometimes about movies. Like if it's in English, I can understand English. Just it's fluent to me, <laughs> but then comes all of a sudden the Spanish part, and I'm just like, I lose a portion of a movie. <laughs> I completely lose the portion of the movie it because always... I can't, for the life of me, follow those fucking subtitles. <laughs> I had I had a moment once where I was watching a movie and uh, and it switched to Spanish, and I had such an awful thought, and it like it came out so awful, but I didn't mean it that way. I was just like. Oh, why do they have to have Spanish in this movie? And then I was like, that sounded really bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it was, it was like, why do they have to have another language? Just keep one. I don't even care if the whole movie's in Spanish. I'll learn Spanish for this movie. But <laughs> it's very American of you if you t- if you if we actually say that. Well, oh. if we're going that direction, yeah, uh, <laughs> Americans, it should be English. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. <laughs> you don't have to speak all that fucking gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. That is, and that is, it's interesting. I've actually considered learning other languages just so I don't have to read subtitles. Yeah, start with the, uh, Icelandic. So, <laughs> start, start. You live here, man. You thought a lot of small Yeah, you talk. You, 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 you're actually pretty good. Yeah, I, uh-huh. think, yeah. I love it. I love that. that you're, I, you're too shy. You got me on TikTok. And <laughs> I, I, have, I have one video that has done well on TikTok so far, yeah. and it's me saying the word polka <laughs> That is the only. Like, I, I had another video where I said Barbara ara ara babara ah damn it now I can't say Barbara ara ara babara ra babara. I said that yeah, that well and that got that got like two likes yeah. and then I say pocketot and it's at over a hundred likes and I'm like how does this work? Do we have to explain now what no, pocketot is? No, we don't have to explain. Okay. Basically, it it's is something dirty. It's a naughty word. It's a naughty. Uh, word. It's okay. not a naughty word. Are you think? Wow, Tavi is thinking a lot now. Are you? <laughs> I thought you were re- reliving some pocket experiences. No. <laughs> I was just, my head was at a couple. Like my girlfriend just t- tried to call me, and I was just like, "Yeah, I, I, haven't, yeah. I haven't heard a word of what you just said for the past three minutes." We were just talking about pocket yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were imagining the subtitles, like in real, like looking at the TV screen here. Like I really need subtitles now. Um, uh, but how? So how? Uh, like I mean, other than other than reading. I mean, like, like when you're reading text and stuff, does the dyslexia ever, uh, with dyslexia, sometimes it's not always, uh, like, like, uh, visual with words that people have problems with. Sometimes it's with thoughts as well. Mm -hmm. Do you have problems with the dyslexia or the ADD, uh, like combined with that? Yeah. That mess with your thought process. Yeah. Yeah. It it, it does happen. It's not, it's not like very obvious or stuff like that. It's, it's, it's. Stressful, stressful situation and me and you have this story of of fringe Reykjavik fringe yeah we were talking about it before the podcast and and it's that thing of where i <laughs> i'm super stressed i'm running <laughs> we're running what four shows five shows a day and it's just a switch between the shows and we're right in the middle of a switch between the show and i have three things that i have to say to dan <laughs> and i just come bolting up the stairs just running up the stairs and he's standing right in front of the bar and I just plant myself, just stop in front of him and just like, <laughs> and he's just watching me. You having a stroke? <laughs> and then I realized that I, I said all these three things at the same exact time. <laughs> so it just, it just all combined into one sentence and just like, it made sense in my head. But when it came out, it still made sense in my 
on my lips, but then it, when it reached your ear, it was complete fucking gibberish. <laughs> I've, had, I've had moments where like Davi will say something, well, or he'll try to say something to me at the bar, and then I'll be like, got it. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gone, and I haven't even realized that I said four times at the same yeah, time. And then, yeah, and then he's just gone, and I'm like, wait, what? what? And I'm, I'm like, where'd you go? <laughs> it kind of becomes a riddle that you have to decipher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there are there are things that that kind of in real life that like i've i've gotten to the point in my life where the add and everything kind of just i know how to work with it i know how to work around it i put 160 percent into my work when it's busy i'm at my my like you've noticed at the bar i'm more comfortable at the bar when I'm serving 15, 20, 30, 40 people at the same time than if there's just one in one customer. Oh yeah. Because as soon as as soon as it's busy, busy, I'm in my element. I'm just I'm just going. I'm just going because my 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 hyperactive disorder just like comes all in at that thing. Well, and it think... becomes very messy, but <laughs> <laughs> but this is no, this is a good Some point. Some glasses are broken. Though. Yes. <laughs> We have a tally. Um, <laughs> no, but no, but the, actually, this is a, this is a good point because, like, I've noticed, like, there is a there is a, a thing that bartenders do. Like, when 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 you find a bartender, like, it's a, it's like you can tell who knows what they're doing. Yeah, because like a bartender will go to one person and be like, "What do you want?" Uh, I'll get two beers. They start pouring one beer and they go, "What do you want?" Yeah. They point to someone else. No, and the, like you have this thing. Where I've never seen anyone bartend the way you do because <laughs> because like I I mean ah I, I pick like like three people and I focus on them and like, I have to do like, I can do like a couple things at the same time, but I can't do too much at the same time. <laughs> but when Dobby is buying the bar, <laughs> he'll take, he'll go, okay, you want, you want two beer, two beers. All right. He'll take one glass, set it down on the tray and balance two glasses on top of it, <laughs> pouring in different directions and but both, both spouts down, uh, taps down. And then he goes, okay, now I need to make five, five gin and tonics. So he starts doing them all at the same time on the bar. And then he's just like, okay, I also need to make this. He like, he'll just do everything yeah. at the same time. And then I'll be like, shit, the beers are overflowing. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. not always. It's, it's, it's usually when I do the two glasses that they overflow because the timing's a little bit off. Yeah. You know, it takes, yeah. And then you're, and then you're just like, shit, I didn't do any flair. So I have to do the flair. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, sometimes, I mean, there's a show going on. But I've I've sometimes just I get lost in just watching Davi for a long <laughs> like the I'm not watching the show I'm watching well the the Davi show <laughs> at the bar yeah. he's like he's he's doing 15 things in, at the same time I was like this is so fascinating but and still sometimes I you, have you, you, uh, ADD <laughs> yeah. see I, I'm I'm actually very jealous of you they, that you can do the flair because because so, he, so for the people listening in that that maybe don't know what we're talking about. David has this stuff that he does where he can flip the glasses. He, he can like, you know, do tricks with them and such like that. And, and it's like the ADD side of me goes, <laughs> goes, man, I want to do that because I'm like, sometimes I'm behind the bar and I just want to do something with my hands. You know, like even if I'm, I'm like, even if I, I'm about to pour a beer, I want to do something fun, you know, mm -hmm. but the Tourette's in me goes, uh uh, uh 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 no you can't do that you, you can't can. flip a glass with a shaky you're hand gonna, no you're, you're gonna flip a glass but then then you're gonna close your eyes and then you're gonna miss the catch yeah yeah basically. And i'm like i don't want to close my eyes you're going to <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh, you you do the you do the tricks and we all go you're gonna break a glass and he goes i'm not gonna break it oh i broke a glass <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just broken there's yeah. no coming back from that i I had one. I had one day where I, I one night we were working and and David goes, Dan, can you get the spare glasses out, out from the back? And I'm like, I just replaced them. <laughs> and he's like, Dan, just just get me some more glasses. I'm like, how many did you break? Just get me the box. <laughs> I come I come back and he has like almost an entire trash bag full of glass. And I'm like, David, what the hell, man? <laughs> and he's like. It looked cool. Yeah. <laughs> it, looked it was cool. entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Oh. there was a lot of hot girls at the bar. <laughs> you have to, you have to show off, of course. But we are, uh, we are actually getting down to the end of this. Uh, but before we go, uh, first of all, Davi, thank you so much for joining us here. Thanks this for having me. Really, really yeah, this has, been, this has been really, really fun. Um, I'm gonna have so much fun listening to this later. Um, <laughs> but uh, before we, before we go, uh, first, 
Oh, also, to the listeners, uh, I, I don't know where I point anymore. I used to have my computer right here, and now it's you know, behind me. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you guys for listening. If you ever have anything you want us to talk about, uh, just send them to us at info at mvhtshow.com. It's not a real uh, link. That's, 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 it is a real link. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, may, I may have ADD, but I can still hear everything that you're saying. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, <laughs> that's why I can hear everything you're saying. Um, that's why I can't continue what, my, what I was saying before. Uh, you you he's, distracted he's me, you son of, son of a bisquick. Um, but yeah, yeah, he's info at mbhtshow.com. <laughs> um, uh, also, uh, Thought Outler, thank you for being a so co-host uh, for me. Thank you so much. <laughs> you guys are horrible people. Um, <laughs> why, do, why do I keep doing this? Uh, but I, anyway, uh, if you want to find out more information it's about us, go to... Go, go to... <laughs> <laughs> you can find us on Facebook at my voice is at Tourette's. Oh, we also have. Hey, Tommy, uh, here's a, a balloon. Twitter, oh, wait. A Twitter, <laughs> we also have Twitter at MVHC Show and uh, Instagram at uh, my voice is at Tourette's. Uh, if you want to find out more information about David, uh, you can check out the Secret Seller page uh, on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, you can also find out, uh, David, you have an Instagram as well. Yeah, it's just David Pot. David Pot? Isn't it Dobbin or something like that? It might that? be Dobbin. Yeah, it's Dobbin. U B. I-N-N. Yeah, well, yeah, wow. <laughs> you can spell. Yeah, almost. <laughs> well, yeah, it took me a while, but... <laughs> it took you a while. And Thodaller, uh, you can find Thodaller. Uh, you have a, you have a Facebook page, Thodaller, I- Iceland Comedian. Yeah. You can also find him under the couch. Because <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's behind you right now. <laughs> yeah. You also have Instagram and uh, and TikTok at uh, th- th- yeah. Thorholler83. Yeah. G H O R. H A L L U R eighty three, and I I, I have I can spell. Uh, wow I have Facebook and I'm Inst- shocked I have Facebook Instagram and and uh, TikTok at Dan's Iron Comedy. Um, uh, it's not very funny. Um, if, <laughs> if you're listening, no, it's very funny. It's, it's very funny. funny. So go check it out. It's uh, just if, about polka dot. If you like if you like the podcast and want to support us, uh, check out our PayPal at paypal.me slash mvht show. That's paypal. <laughs> <laughs> MBHT show. Um, uh, this uh, episode has been brought to you by Games the Studio, where we're recording <laughs> the Secret Seller Ice's first and only comedy club. It's based and and Smarty's uh, volcano it's sauce is the greatest hot sauces I've ever had in my life. It's actually very good. Yeah. They are. <laughs> very, very good. I have nothing against Smarty's volcano sauce. You have a problem with everything else, but not Smarty's volcano oh, sauce. The sauce is really good. I love hot food. Yeah. They're, 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 they're the greatest hot sauces. Uh, you can actually get them in the in the states now. You can order them online. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, if you're listening to this on Spotify or, or uh, Apple Podcasts or any of that stuff, uh, remember to like and subscribe uh, to the podcast, whatever it is. Follow. Uh, if you like it, uh, feel free to leave us a five-star review. If you didn't like it, though, uh, leave us a one-star review and tell us why you didn't like it. Uh, most of the time, it's David. But uh, if you didn't like Wait. it... <laughs> if you didn't like it, tell us why you didn't like it, and we'll learn from it and make it a better podcast so that everyone can enjoy it. But it, it, is, it is also worth mentioning that I would actually recommend, if you don't like this podcast, leave a bad review on Lebowski Bar like everybody Oh, yeah, says. of course. <laughs> Thanks oh. for the joke, Dan. I didn't ask for permission, but I just I used did. to do that all the time on stage. I was, I was like, if you like the show, please leave us a tip. If you didn't like the show, just leave a bad TripAdvisor review for Lebowski Bar like everyone else. And, and, and I always felt like such an asshole. And then I actually went to my friend who's one of the owners of Lebowski. And I was like, yeah, have you ever actually gotten any bad TripAdvisor reviews? And he's like, why? And I explained to him and he goes, Dude, why? <laughs> because it's funny. It's I was fucking like, comedy. Because it's funny. And he goes, yeah, yeah. it's a little funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, your God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, your oh, God. Your oh. God. But yeah, and other other than that, uh, thank you so much for listening and uh, check out new episodes every Tuesday.